Today, I'm flying to Hamilton, Ontario for a volunteer flight to pick up a Hope Air patient. To learn more about Hope Air, visit hopeair.ca. And Hamilton, Hope Air 140, showing 3,000 feet, and uh, we are going to be um, at Delva. We have we've cleared for the RNAV 30 approach. Hope Air 140, Hamilton Tower, hello, runway 30, wind 180 at 6. Altimeter 29er, 69er, information Victor, report Delva. 29er, 69er, information Victor, will report at Delva. It doesn't look like a lot is going on when I'm not speaking to air traffic control, especially when the airplane is on autopilot. But believe me, there's a lot of things going on in my head, especially in an instrument flight like this. Okay, you can see that it's starting to pour quite heavily. And, um, yeah, what we are doing, do, what uh, we have been uh, cleared for the RNAV approach into Hamilton, uh, starting at um, uh, Delva, still at 3,000 feet uh, up until then. Ever wonder how pilots land planes safely in thick clouds and heavy rain when they can't even see the runway? When visibility is low, pilots rely on their instruments, like altimeters, heading indicators, navigation radios. I'm going to activate my approach. And it guides them safely down to the runway. And I'm not going to descend until Delva. Think of it like following a precise set of invisible steps. The instrument approach gives a pilot a step-by-step -step route, where to descend, where to turn, until they can finally see the runway. Start getting my power back, one inch at a time. Can you bring me to Main is 27 grams. Main is 27 grams, I'm the Apron Bravo. I'd like to get the Apron 5, please. Main is 27 grams, C by Bravo, runway 06. C by Bravo, runway 06, Apron 5 for officer correction. Main is 27. Open 140 tower and uh, caution. Uh, lightning strikes observed about 5 miles southeast of uh, Delva. I will keep an eye out for this, uh, Open 140. Right. Okay, so we got some lightning strikes, but I don't see them in my, um, my lightning detector. The weather radar scans ahead for rain and storms, and the lightning detector detects lightning, like warning signs, letting the pilots steer clear of the dangerous storm cells, even if they are hidden in the clouds. You're an autopilot, but it's um, doing a lot of... Doing a lot of corrections to hold altitude and uh, and uh, heading shows that it's uh, turbulent and uh, it's something to expect for on the landing. I'm off of the autopilot. Hamilton Ground, this is Oscar India Juliet. Oscar India Juliet Ground. Currently at the cargo jet hangar, looking for tow instructions to uh, Apron Three. Uh, Screen to Julia Ground, Roger, proceed Charlie to the apron. Proceed okay, Charlie to the apron, Oscar and you, Julia. Every airplane has a unique call sign, like car license plates. When air traffic controller is talking to you, you know that they are calling you because they address your call sign. When you are talking to air traffic control, you first use your call sign before addressing them. The other calls, they were not for me, they were to someone else. Yes, I'll take care of the undercarriage. Or the mixture auxiliary pumps are on low, and we have the switch uh, on. I have to remember to disconnect the yaw dampener before I land. Now I'm getting the plane and the landing configuration using something that's called the flow. Flow is a pilot's mental map that's a memorized pattern of actions moving through the cockpit in a specific order. Switching this on, checking that reading, flipping that toggle. It's designed for speed and memory before every phase of the flight. Then comes the checklist, which is like a safety net. Two minutes to Delta. That kind of wall of weather up to the left, oh, I saw that lightning. Uh, people have asked me what's the, the most important trait in a pilot. And I would say it's situational awareness, knowing exactly where the plane is as it's moving through those three dimensions, 
but also knowing exactly what the airplane's configuration is and your mental state always prepared for anything that could happen. Oh, that's getting a little heavy. Airplane 140, turn caution that the weather system now up your left side for about uh, two miles moving eastbound. Great to have that in sight, uh, Airplane 140. When a pilot flies, they are never alone. From takeoff to landing, air traffic control is there. They're watching the skies, sequencing the landings, rerouting us around weather, and when visibility drops or traffic piles up, it's the air traffic controllers who keep everything moving safely. It's no small feat, and to all the air traffic controllers out there, thank you. You keep the sky safe, and we pilots really appreciate it. So that lightning just above me. At uh, Delva in four seconds. Got my descent. I hope Air uh, 140 is set at uh, Delva for the RNAP 30. Hope Air 140 Tower, wind 160 at 5, clear to land runway 30. Clear to land runway 30, hope Air 140. Okay, next is uh, GOPAP, uh, 3200 for the final approach, uh, descent. Once I'm there, I'm going to go to the heading board and nav. You might look at me in this cockpit and think, he's just pushing buttons on the autopilot. But there's a lot going on behind that calm exterior. I'm constantly monitoring how the autopilot is flying, making sure it's following the plan exactly as expected, and I'm thinking a few steps ahead. What's the weather doing? Is the tailwind picking up? Is the spacing with that aircraft ahead? If something changes, I need to be jumping on that instantly. And I'm also planning for the what ifs. What if, if we need to divert to another airport? What if the weather moves and overhead the field when we land? 3200, nav and heading board. And you can see that it's switched over to approach. Now I need to monitor for the glide scope coming in. And uh, uh, one, 11, uh, LPB 10,016. Arrival gets very busy as you're configuring the aircraft with the right power settings for the speeds. There's a specific speed under which you can get the gear down, so we want to make sure that we get to that. Good for the landing, so I don't need to tell them again. Light scope is coming in. We also have to make sure that we have a landing clearance, which we do. Two minutes. Got my flaps to 15. And I have the airport in sight. Wind 140 at 5. Like I'm going to have a little bit of a tailwind. Okay, off of autopilot. Below 140 knots, so I can put my gear down. My flaps down to 30. See how much I'm crabbing in. Have to go back to capture my glide scope, but now I'm on visual.
Landing assured. Four flaps. And hope one four zero short final runway three zero. Hope one four zero Roger. Wind one five zero four. Continue with landing clear. I hope one four zero. The green confirmed. Ninety knots. And touchdown. Hopper one four zero tower, are you parking? Uh, onward uh, aviation. Hopper one four zero tower, Roger. You can exit at Charlie or continue and exit at Golf. Your choice. And uh, contact ground one two one six off the runway. Okay, golf, and then uh, uh, and then over to ground. Touchdown might feel like the end of the flight, but we are not done yet. Now it's time for ground operations. As soon as I'm off the runway, I switch to the tower from the tower frequency to ground control. They tell me where to go, and big airports can be a bit of a maze. Okay, welcome. One two one six. Ground. One two. I'm switching over to the ground frequency now. One of the reasons I do these videos is that so that I can do a self critique, and one self critique here is that I'm not on the yellow line, which ensures the airplane is right in the middle of the taxiway. And ground, uh, Hope Air one four zero on uh, Golf, uh, off of runway three zero. Hope Air one four zero ground taxi via Golf Charlie cross on way two four. Have a good day. Uh, Golf Charlie and cross runway two four. Thanks. Hope Air one four zero. open. That's actually cowl open. Another critique is to come to a full stop before changing the frequency. But as you noticed earlier, I was still taxiing while I was changing the frequency. I'm going to fast forward a bit here and get us to the main apron because it's a lot of taxiing. Air Canada. Lots of cargo jets. Okay, I see the marshaller. You notice that I don't shut down the airplane immediately after coming to a stop. That's because these are turbo engines and I give it a good three minutes for the turbos to cool down. I let the marshaller know by putting a sign on my windshield. Thanks again for watching this video and uh, be sure to support Hope Air. Go to hopeair.ca to learn more about Hope Air's mission. Thanks for watching.